that rousing tune was Afraid to Dream by Benny Goodman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sarah Sethi of 4MZOE Radio. Today is Saturday, the 14th of March, and this is the news of the world. It's going to be a cloudy day in southwest Ohio with possible showers in the afternoon. Franklin D. Roosevelt made a speech last night in Hyde Park, New York. He spoke of tensions both across the country and across the globe, promising to unify the nation through his work. In Kentucky refugee camps, there have been protests due to the lack of support the camps have been receiving. Other refugee camps have been widely successful, providing victims of the Great Flood with housing, and some have even hosted touring theater plays. Meanwhile, the refugees in Kentucky are struggling daily. These touring shows have been boosting morale in some parts of the country, but more rural areas simply do not have the funds to do so. These protests turned violent in one Kentucky refugee camp yesterday, with protesters demanding fairer treatment. And on to sports news. In a knockout, Bruce Hobbs has won the 1937 Grand National Horse Race, the youngest ever to do so at 16 years of age. Were they able to find the frame? No, they didn't. It's tearing my mother up inside. She went to go see a play in the theater just to distract herself from the news. Jeepers, that's just awful. I can't imagine what it's like to lose something so sentimental. I'm so sorry. Thanks. Your family got everything out, right? Almost everything. My mom was able to get out the really important stuff. That's good. I'm glad someone did. Maybe it's still there. Maybe it just got knocked over and is covered with all the mess from the water. Yes, even so, the picture would have too much water damage. Was that the only artifact you had left of him? Yes, it is. I don't know why it, why I care so much. It's not like I even knew my grandfather that well. He died so long ago and I was so young. But he is family. Also, your mother loved him, and it's hard to see the ones you love in pain. I guess. I just can't help but feel so hopeless in this situation. I can't comfort my mother or siblings because I don't even know when this disaster is going to end. How long are we going to be stuck in this camp, and what kind of world will we be going home to when we finally do leave? It's not like things can just go back to normal after the flood. I guess all we can do is wait.
Are they paying you at all? A little. Not enough to make rent, but still something. So you're coming home? <sighs> I don't know. I don't think I have an option. I'm sorry. I don't even know what to say. Everything is going to shit. I feel guilty for being upset. You know, there are bigger things going on in the world. All the hospitals are full and people are dying. But it feels so shitty to get this taken away. Not that I feel like I'm owed anything, but I've been waiting Laura, and working. Laura, you do deserve this. You've worked for it harder than any sane person would. You spent six years hustling and working your ass off. You did that and you earned your spot on that stage. I was so excited for my big sister on Broadway. At the end of the day, it's completely and totally unfair. There isn't time or space for a pity party, at least not here. You have to take that time for yourself to grieve or to mope or whatever. Otherwise, it'll always be in the back of your mind. You'll just get bitter. I think the worst part is like not knowing. Like I'd be fine if I could just know when it'll all be over. But when it is all over, is it even gonna be the same? Do you want me to come pick you up? Julia, it's like four and a half hours. I know how far away you are. Do you want me to come pick you up? No, I'm okay. I, I have to figure out stuff here anyways. I have to find a subletter and figure out how to file for unemployment. My laptop's in the dressing room. I'm okay. Okay, but if you change your mind. I know, I love you. I love you too. Go cry in the shower. And what? I'm just supposed to keep this from her? I'm not saying that. Then what are you saying? Because that's what it sounds like to me. Darling, please, just calm down and let's talk. No, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that she's too young to hear about protests. Well, she's 12 years old. That seems old enough to me. Yes, you're right, but... I are you not going to tell her because you think it won't affect her? Because that also seems very wrong to me. No, darling, it is not that. Then why are we keeping this from her? Lucy, please, listen to me. Look at all the stressful things occurring in her life right now. She lost her father at a young age. She has lost her home recently and is living in a strange place. Do you really think it's a good idea to add more stress? No, but I also don't think we should be keeping something like this from her. They are people affected by the same disaster who are just looking for the same relief that we've gotten. Theater, music, you name it. And I agree that it's an issue. You know I know that, right? I know. So then why are we keeping this from her? It, it's not forever. It's just for the time being. And who knows, she might even come to us. But aren't we supposed to be the role models? I feel she should hear about something as serious as protests from her family and not from the radio passing by. Don't you agree? I just don't know. Mother! Darling, I'm so sorry, but I really don't know. I try so hard to raise you right for you to have a good life. But look at the world. You and your sister have been thrown into quite a mess and there's nothing I can do to protect you from it. Have you seen your sister's face? The way it shines when she goes to see one of those theater shows? She is living her childhood through the arts and that's all I want for her to be happy. So you don't want to tell her because... Because it, we will lose that light in her eyes. I just want to shield and protect her from that ugly side of the world. Do you understand? Oh, Mother, of course I understand. I want the same thing. Trust me, I do. But I also think it's wrong to keep something like this from her. 
What if a protest happens here? What if it gets violent? Oh, darling. I'm sorry, Mother. Honestly, I'm just so scared. I know, darling. I know. Hello? Charlotte? What? Wait, uh, what happened to Jamie? Wait, they took... they took them where? Wait, what do you, what do you mean they're not releasing them? Bail? Wait, what the... what the fuck, Charlotte? Um... um... Uh, I have... Uh, like 600, maybe seven. They said it's 4,000. 4,000? Where the fuck are we supposed to get 4,000 dollars? I have 400. Carl just sent me 800. Jonah has a ton of cash. Car's calling him now. Okay, I am about to send you 680. Have you asked Reese? I know he was saving for that car. Texting him now. What happened? We were out in front of City Hall and Jamie and I were going to leave, but right before we did, the cops blocked off the road in front of us like a lot of cops with like shields and fucking sticks and shit. What the fuck? We were gonna turn around, take the side street, and then shit hit the fan. I didn't even see it, but suddenly another protester was on the ground, and the police were fucking assaulting him, and Jamie went over to try and help the guy. They put their hands on one of the cops' shoulders, and I can't- Charlotte, even... Charlotte. It... it is okay. It's okay. We'll figure it out, and we will get it sorted, Car and- calling. I'll talk to you later. Okay, yeah, that sounds- I am very confused. I guess I just don't understand. What is the difference? What makes me different? Here I am in one Ohio refugee camp and I have access to the arts at my fingertips. But my friend who lives the next county over doesn't get the same benefit. I've been hearing of protests and violent actions being taken against people who are just asking for the same rights that I've been given. Why is it that they have to fight for it while it's just handed to me on a silver platter? Because I have money? Because I live in Henderson County? Why does money get to determine who has access to the arts and who doesn't? We live in the same country. We were affected by the same disaster. It's 2020. People interact with art every single day. Art is what differentiates us from ants, from trout, from aliens. Humans have the ability to travel at over 24,000 miles an hour. A doctor in Singapore can perform heart surgery on a patient in New Hampshire. Yet, art is still considered an upper-class commodity. Art is a human right. Every single person, no matter who you are, where you are, should have the right to create and to consume art. Yet, artists are still one of the lowest paid professionals in the country. Art is the highest form of expression, of joy, of hope, of sadness, and of fear. Why do some people get access to the arts, like theater, music, while others have to painfully wait it out? Why isn't there enough money to go around, especially during a disaster like this? People need art. People look to art during their worst times. Everyone is an artist in their own right. Why is it only given to those who deserve the right? There are people somewhere in this world that are telling my story. They're telling the story of an adult who still thinks she's a kid, who's trapped in a house that's too small, in a town that's too far away, and I don't get to experience that story. Why? 
because I don't live within driving distance of the Met or the Kennedy Center or because I can't afford a $149 ticket. But they aren't making it for me. Art is inevitable and will always happen. Everyone in the world is either an artist or an audience or both. Why is art treated like a distraction for the rich when in reality it's a lifeline for all kinds of people? And I just wonder. And I just want to know, when, when will, will it change? change?